Welcome guys, today I'll explain an American action biography crime film called Jamesy Boy. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins by showing James Burns, a young man who a prison warden paralyzes because it is his first day in prison, but he is already causing trouble on the bus that transfers him to jail. James was imprisoned for gun sales, drug possession, and illegal firearms. Tracy, James' mother, had attempted to enroll him in high school several years before. However, the school initially rejected James because he lived his life as a troubled teenager who frequently committed crimes that landed him in and out of prison. James and his mother eventually returned home, where he appeared upset that, despite he had behaved well in recent months, no other school would indeed accept a troubled young man like him. He was just about to take milk from the fridge, and he observed the police detector attached to his feet, since he was still under city arrest. Afterward, James went to a nearby minimarket to get some milk. He met Crystal and Drew, who turned out to be robbing the minimarket and mistakenly involving him. He agreed to befriend the two after they all managed to flee. Following that, the prison's chief warden, Lieutenant Fulton, reached James and alerted him not to cause any trouble. Even though he had only been in prison for a few months, James was constantly getting into fights with other prisoners, although he was only defending other inmates who were constantly being bullied. The scene shifted back in time. Just after a petty robbery at one of their friends' house, Crystal informs James about Rock, a guy who hired her, and Drew to do odd jobs as drug couriers. Tracy discovers a bottle of liquor in James' room that night and instantly scolds him for trying to raise him and his younger sister, Holly, to be good kids, although she is a single parent. However, James, who was irritated, yelled at his mother. The absence of a father figure in his life is likely to have affected many difficulties, particularly controlling his anger. Tracy reminded her son that his legal appeal was approaching but he defied his detention by cutting his ankle bracelet. Back to the current time. Guillermo and his gang attempt to stab James in the bathroom. James was able to avoid their attacks. But while James and Guillermo got into a fight, Chris, who happened to be nearby, became a victim and was severely injured. The brawl was eventually broken up, but Lieutenant Fulton blamed James for the uproar and placed him in solitary confinement. The setting then shifts backward in history to when James visits Rock's house and asks about earning money like Crystal and Drew. Rock offers him the job of a getaway driver. While Rock and Drew are driving away, James, still in the car, speculates something is wrong. He eventually took the initiative to track down his two stranded colleagues and quickly help them. After they finish their work and leave, Rock lavishes him with cash and offers him a full-time position with him. In the press where he notices a solitary prisoner named Conrad. He hears a rumor that Conrad is a violent prisoner who has killed numerous cops. Conrad ignored James' attempts to befriend him. The scene shifted back to the past. James and Crystal are exploring the aisles of a convenience store. When James attempted to purchase cigarettes and liquor, the cashier, a young lady named Sarah, suggested that he take them without paying since she did not want to get into any difficulties with him. Following that, James met with Rock and attempted to convince him to raise his wages since he had been working hard all along, but Rock rejected his request. The scene then shifts to the current day, when his mother visits James in prison. His mother tried to convince James and advised him to behave well, so that he could be released sooner than the judge's order. James began to mull over his mother's words in his cell. He was committed to behaving well and wrote poetry about his experiences in prison. Since James has been having nightmares since the affair that injured Chris, he turns to poetry to block out prison. He then wrote a poem and presented it to Conrad. Conrad's attitude softened after reading the poem. He then advised James to continue writing poetry to lighten the burden of his life while incarcerated. Since that time, James has made it a point to remain writing poetry so he won't be frustrated during his time in prison and steadily regain control of himself. Not long after, Chris eventually recovered from the severe wound he suffered. James then reached Chris and promised him that he would always defend him in prison while serving his sentence. The scene reverted to the past. Rock assigns James and Drew to collect a debt from a guy that owns a strip club. The two then stormed into the guy's office. James then pulled a gun at the guy because he refused to pay the debt. However, the guy's men quickly arrived and ambushed James and Drew. After being kicked out, James smashed the guy's car window to vent his rage, where he unintentionally discovered a bag containing weapons. He grabbed the bag without a doubt, 
In the meantime, James, who is already friends with Sarah, approaches her and engages in a heart-to-heart -heart talk. James felt warmth and bliss that he had never felt before when he was with Sarah. He also plans to change, leave all of his illegal jobs, and start a new, good living with Sarah. He then returns to headquarters, where Rock immediately berates him harshly for risking Rock's business by stealing the gun belonging to the striptease club's guy. But after that, Rock instantly directed James to fix the situation. In the current time, James tries to convince Lieutenant Fulton to transfer Chris to a protective cell until his trial, but Fulton refuses. Guillermo strives to start a fight with James the next day, but James can handle his emotions and chooses to ignore Guillermo. Not long afterward, Chris was finally undergoing trial, and his sentence increased to six years because some time ago, he was involved in a fight between James and Guillermo in the bathroom. Noticing this, James instantly felt guilt for Chris. The scene shifts back to the past, showing James and Sarah, who fall in love and are determined to have a romantic relationship. James eventually decided to quit his criminal life behind. He then attempts to leave Rock's team, but Rock informs him that there is a deal heading down that night and guilt trips him into participating. Rock stated that he had found a client who would buy all of the weapons stolen by James some long while ago and would pay a relatively large reward for them. He eventually agreed to assist Rock in selling the weapon because he desperately needed cash to live with Sarah and wanted to finish it all one last time. In the meantime, Lieutenant Fulton commands all inmates to exit their cells and form a line. Chris has a battered appearance because he is frequently bullied in prison. However, he appears to have taken a cloth from his clothes and is preparing to hang himself. When James realized what was going on, he dashed over to Chris to stop him, but the prison guards prevented James. Chris inevitably jumped out of the hall and committed suicide. James became outraged and beat Guillermo. Previously, James and Drew waited for the weapon buyer at a designated location. However, because they could not reach an agreement, James and the buyers were involved in a gunfight until the police showed up. James and Drew were able to flee, but because they had left Rock's car in such a state, the police initially investigated the car's owner and were able to apprehend Rock and Crystal, who were present at headquarters. James then dashes off to Sarah's house and tells her to pack their belongings so they can leave the city together. On the other hand, Sarah declines and asks James to face his crime. James became frustrated and helpless after being rejected by Sarah. He was eventually apprehended by police and thrown in jail. Meanwhile, as a consequence of Chris's suicide, Lieutenant Fulton is being sued by the prison committee for being unable to provide security for inmates who feel threatened, such as Chris. On the other hand, James, who was still grieving over Chris's death, became emotionally fragile and purposefully began a fight with the other inmates in the yard. Conrad immediately stopped him and notified James that he needed to be careful and handle himself due to his upcoming trial. Not long after that, James was eventually undergoing the trial. In front of all, James expresses his sorrow about Chris's death and the previous decisions that troubled him. James is resigned to getting his sentence increased due to all he did in prison, and since he was unable to protect and save Chris. Nonetheless, he vowed to become a better person, live his life correctly, and never commit crimes afterward. When the judge heard James' sincere confession, he decided to reduce James' sentence to be released sooner. Furthermore, James has performed admirably throughout the remainder of his sentence. James was eventually released sometime later. When he said farewell to Conrad, he told James that if James ever returned to prison, then he would kill him. The two friends finally split up. Outside the prison, James is greeted by his mother and younger sister, overjoyed that he has been released early. He got a job as a janitor not long after that. One night, James ran into an old acquaintance who offered him some illegal work, but he declined. James then remembered about Sarah and planned to meet with her. Once he showed up at the min market where Sarah worked, he noticed that it was closed. He goes to Sarah's house, but her father informs him that she has moved. The film concludes with James finally reuniting with Sarah. On the other hand, Sarah is now engaged to another man and content with her life. Nonetheless, Sarah was delighted to see James once more and find that he had changed. They discuss their lives and James conveys a wish to travel to another city. In real life, James Byrne is a writer, producer, and activist who is outspoken about the importance of protecting children and young people from violence. And the movie ends.